Most of you probably won't care anymore, but from January 8th, 2015 until August 25th, 2021, I hosted a popular Destiny show called Fireteam Chat. Welcome to 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 Fireteam Chat live. Welcome to Fireteam Chat. To say I like this game would be an understatement. It was my game. I played every expansion day one. I would write reviews for the game on IGN. I would raid and stream day one. I was a big part of the Destiny community. So why did I quit talking about it? Well, in this video, I wanna break down five of the main reasons why you don't see me posting montages, hosting Fireteam Chat, or really talking about Destiny much anymore at all, and why I find that very unfortunate. Number one, Fireteam Chat. Let's start with the big one, Fireteam Chat. People love this show. It was by far the most popular Destiny podcast on the market. Sure, DCP was close, and they're great, but the fans really latched on to Fireteam Chat's snappy three-person panel and shorter runtime. Just before Witch Queen, a beloved expansion that most people ended up adoring, I noticed a trend about myself, though. I couldn't see past the flaws in Destiny 2 anymore. PvP had and has been mostly a mess of ability spam. The systems became so grindy that I felt like ripping my eyeballs out every time I saw another one of those square grids in a season. And I felt like I was becoming this negative and jaded commenter about a game that brought me so much joy over the years. In hindsight, after I announced that the show would be ending, it wouldn't be until years later that I would discover that basically the entire leadership team who had followed the show, been on it, met me at events, they had also moved on to Marathon. I think that's just gonna be a magic formula. And weapons for your runner that are just gonna make your character stronger. And in our case, those giants are Halo and Destiny. I find it fascinating that these people, who I really like, by the way, they've been very kind to me, and this video is in no way a slight to any individual, but I find it fascinating that Lars, Scott, and Moore all moved over to the next big thing, Marathon. I mean, anything Scott and Lars touch turns to gold, so I'll bet Marathon is a banger when it launches. But it's funny to me that the same people who had been on Destiny for 10 plus years behind the scenes were moving on at the exact same time I was. There's a lot more I can say about the Destiny show on IGN, like how it was almost entirely kept going because I just wouldn't give up on it. I would say 95% of those episodes were planned, edited, recorded, and posted by me. Near the end, I even loosened my grip just a bit and let Travis help me do an outline here and there. But yeah, I was cutting those during my personal time because I loved the community and I didn't want to let them down. But after some introspection, I, I also didn't feel this jaded, annoyed version of myself was giving them the best either. So I stepped away and let DCPs and Destiny shows of the future continue to shine. Number two, the gameplay and repetitive systems. Oof, this one's been tough. Gameplay wise, what was bothering me so much? Well, it became a meme for my friends and I after Beyond Light to ask, how excited are you to unlock the squares this time? The mechanics... <laughs> that have been implemented to keep player engagement up just burn me out so freaking fast my head is still spinning. The square system, the events that you had to do whether you like them or not just to see the next story beat, the rinse and repeat models that would be dropped with each season burn through my soul. Not only that, but PvP just never got the support it needed. I went freaking hard on PvP around 2020 when the sniping meta was still in the game, and I think it was some of the best PvP Destiny had in years. But the support it got in the three years since is non-existent. Joe Blackburn put out a great video talking about how that's going to change. And we're going to build a PvP strike team around the same principle, but have it focused on the Crucible. But holy heck, three years of yelling about this to finally get an update is nuts. And we have to remember that most of the people at Bungie love Destiny as much as we do. In my opinion, they're just stuck chasing that retention rate and monetization to keep the ship running. More on the monetization thing in a little bit, though. Separate from all those issues, however, there's the fact that weapons just feel pointless to chase at this point. Unless you're min-maxing every little aspect, my funnel web is going to do just fine against anything the game has to throw at me. You're telling me Recluse was a big enough issue that you had to delete it, but players should also be able to play how they want. And oh, surprise, here's Funnel Web anyway, which is basically Recluse. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And you can replace Recluse with whatever rocket or grenade launcher you like. Once you have a pretty good waveform, who cares that this season they're introducing a 0.02% better waveform launcher? The raids were easy anyway, at least until what looks like an overcorrection with Dark Below. 
So who cares about the weapons? And the armor? Well, the new system kind of eliminates the need to chase armor specs. If you're playing as long as most of us have, you don't really need a new build. You likely have your T37 sets on lock by now. It's just a matter of switching perks on your super or whatever ability you happen to have. And holy heck, the grind to unlock those perks is super annoying. If the padding to unlock something forces you to use an ability you don't enjoy, like Strand, I hate Strand. I know I'm in the minority, but I just don't like it. I love Void. But now I can unlock those Strand perks in a mission with a different ability. I have to use this stupid ability I don't like to get all the perks I don't even really want. And that annoying grind system permeates the design decisions everywhere. Remember when we needed three randomly dropped frames to unlock a gun and then had to grind those guns like holy hell the game systems are just all designed around being a time suck farming a raid to get galahorn is one thing but now that retention strategy has sunk its teeth into every aspect of destiny 2 from the gate kept stories and exotic quests to unlocking a freaking strand perk even just talking about this a bit i can't help but feel like a sucker for not seeing the design decisions made to waste my time sooner also Fix the vault. Like, why Why do I have to sit around and delete stuff for hours before I play any new expansion? Number three, the story. We all played Lightfall. It was bad. And take it with a grain of salt, but this chase to keep fans happy with regular content that Bungie finds themselves stuck in is rumored to have caused the Lightfall release to feel bad. Is the rumor that this was put together quickly with a story that are just scraps of another project true? Also, why no explanation of the veil? That's weird. A beyond nonsensical story that feels rushed? An introduction of a new area that feels empty? What is going on? And beyond the lightfall issues that even the most diehard Destiny fans have pointed out, what are we even chasing at this point? Cade died, but is about to be brought back. Is Cade really dead? Are you guys like really killing him or is this some sort of like fake story beat? Cade is dead. It's great to see Cade like return to this world. I don't know why I should care about this guy killing the Traveler because as far as I can tell, he's not really messing with Earth, so who cares? Bungie has long had an issue with the siloed nature of their stories, and the current season, well, good, according to Paul Destiny Tassi, go check out his channel, I'll bet right now has little to do with whatever we're chasing. Each seasonal story does a pretty poor job of coming together in a nice feeling way without making everything we accomplished in the previous seasons feel pointless. It's probably all explained in the grimoire somewhere or a Bife video somewhere, but as a player, why did I know life the events in Season of the Haunted again? Or grind the catch ship? It all just starts to feel like wasted time, and that doesn't feel good when you have a playtime of 1,894.7 hours on Steam. And I don't want to tell you what my time adds up to when I add my PS4 and Destiny 1 time into the mix, and Xbox time also. So after that much time and this many years in the world of Destiny, I think many of the hardcore players are just ready to step away. So basically, I'd say around this time next year, I'm going on sabbatical. Number four, monetization. Look, if you know me, you know I freaking hate microtransactions. My belief is that simply having them in your game means you'll be creatively compromised in some capacity. Creative effort is being put towards a monetization tactic versus overall design strategy. Sure, these exist because players keep buying them. The whales are the ones keeping the fleeting cosmetic items alive in all of our video games. And Destiny, oh boy, have they gone down the monetization rabbit hole. This is so well laid out in an amazing video by Asdacross that I'll just point you towards it. It outlines how Destiny 2 has become pay to win, how the monetization structure is just broken, charging players upwards of $400 just to get all the current content in the game to date. I love Bungie, but holy crap, it's just gross. How does this company that I love, the company that basically got me started in the industry when I won a Halo 3 video competition on GameTrailers.com end up here? That money is going back into Destiny 2, we're told? Look, this is a little crass, but my grandfather used to have a saying, don't piss on me and tell me it's raining. You say we're supporting the game we love, but in actuality, it feels a lot like we're supporting another project. And number five, the montages. So even with all that said, a week or so after a season ended, I would compile all the cutscenes and every piece of spoken dialogue in a season and post it to this channel. I really like doing it, and a lot of people have been asking me where it went. To give you an idea of just how much I like making these, I stream my capture of the entirety of the base Destiny 2 campaign and all the spoken dialogue just before the game decided to delete this content out of existence forever. <laughs> we broke it! To date, I think I still have one of the best compilations ever created on that original story, which is now lost forever. I did the exact same thing for every single season since. 
I started this initiative to archive all of Destiny 2's story in this manner with Shadowkeep and Season of the Undying, a high point in the game's history to me. A new villain was introduced, there were these in-game events that would happen and story beats to revisit every week. So what happened? Well, this formula of gatekeeping the story behind an event you were required to play, whether you enjoyed the event or not, will continue from October 2019 until today and likely for the rest of the game's history. I already outlined the repetitive systems earlier in the video, but more importantly, Bungie told me directly and everyone else to stop making the montages. On April 6, 2023, in a This Week in Destiny post, one line of text was added that's very important. After revealing their new montages that fail to capture 90% of what's shown during a season, they had this line. Can I share my recordings on YouTube too? We ask that you leave the cutscenes up to us. We totally understand and allow clips to be used during your video creation for movie of the week or other content creation needs, but full cutscenes will need to remain on our channel. And sure enough, when I reached out to my contacts at Bungie, they confirmed that the montages needed to stop. So sorry, YouTube. I grew up as a comic book collector and I love collecting all the story beats of the Phalanx Covenant and the X-Men, for example, or the cross-promoted Wolverine lore beats that happened when his adamantium was ripped out in X-Men, I think it was 25. And in some weird way, those lore collections gave me a connection with that collector kiddo in me. I still haven't fully accepted that. I, I just can't do these anymore. I really liked making them. I even went so far as to create movies for some of the seasons with HUDless capture and multiple camera angles, and all that is gone. I still have all of Lightfall and plan to capture all the seasonal story beats before Bungie again wipes them from the history books with the release of Final Shape this holiday. Yeah, it's all going to be gone. Again, I spent a decade covering this game in different ways, and now one of my favorite contributions are done. That's their right as the owner of the IP, by the way, so I have to respect it. And all creators should know that. At any time, a game studio can just say, yeah, we're just going to nuke your channel because you haven't transformed a piece of media enough. Just look at all the drama that happens with Toei Animation all the time. They own the IP. They have the creative control over it. Minecraft just had a change in their terms of service that won't even let you use Minecraft in the title. Bungie has the same thing in their terms of service, but nobody has noticed it before. Anyway, they have very specific use cases in their terms of service, and I imagine this trend will continue with other people in the future. But that's it. Those are the five big reasons I stopped making Destiny content and why it's hard to even turn on the game these days. But who cares, right? I have my time. Destiny is doing better than ever and is raking in huge profits for Bungie and their parent Sony. None of this matters. At least the retention and monetization strategies implemented won't impact any other games we love, right? Jim Ryan said what? In terms of deployment of Sony Capital, when you look at $69 billion for Activision compared to $3.6 billion for Bungie, we believe that Bungie can give us way more than a $69 billion acquisition of Activision. And that's before considering the relative value of that particular transaction. Oh, shit. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to the members for supporting me making content like this. I really, truly appreciate you. If you want to become a member, you can click that join button right down there. If you want to see my last rant about Destiny, you can do so right here or even check out the old Fireteam chat episodes. That's it. Bye, everybody.